The forsythias are blooming and yet it's still snowing. Is it spring or is it winter? Well, stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. Well, here we are, April 18th, and it's snowing again. The forsythias are out. The grass is actually starting to turn green. I put away my maple syrup buckets long ago. Um, we're ready for spring, but it looks like winter still kind of wants to hang on. So the, I'm sitting, I'm trying to decide should I take the sled out or should I take the dogs out bike mushing? With this kind of snow, it's going to be a little slippery. If I go bike mushing, I don't have chains on my tires and I could imagine losing control of the bicycle. And as I walk through this snow, you can see on their run, it's pretty fluffy. It's beautiful and it's white, but the temperature is 37 degrees. This is really pretty wet. I mean, really, this is it's white rain is what it is. If I take my sled out on this, I imagine hitting rocks and hitting obstacles and uh, just possibly damaging my sled. So I think this might be the kind of day where we just go for a snow hike with the dogs. So today's episode, I'm going to take the dogs for a short hike and I'm going to talk about my um, how I got into dog sledding and <laughs> about the Huskies, and about my former team of Malamutes. So stay tuned. Well, I just brought the dogs inside. Uh, they just had a little bit of breakfast, and so now they're napping. And so while they're napping after digesting their breakfast, uh, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about my dogs and the dogs that I have now and the dogs that I used to have, and some of the differences between recreational mushing and uh, commercial mushing. So anyway, my experience with dogs is I've had dogs most of my life. I got my first dog when I was 17 years old. And at the age of 17, uh, one of my big plans for when I graduated high school was to through hike the Appalachian Trail. And so uh, my parents were very supportive of that. One of the things that they wanted, my mother, she had this idea that if I had a dog, a dog would protect me, which I thought was fantastic because I had never been allowed to have a dog growing up. So uh, I wanted to get a Husky initially because I've always liked that Nordic breed look. Uh, but what I ended up purchasing for my first dog when I was 17, I bought an eight week old pup and she was a Shepherd Husky cross and her name was Kane. And so here is a picture of Kane. And so Kane was, like I said, a Shepherd Husky cross. I bought her at a, at a little local pet shop, paid $15 for her. She was a wonderful, wonderful dog. And so Kane, uh, I had her, I got her at eight weeks old. And by the time we started off to hike the Appalachian Trail, uh, at the time she was a year and a half. And she had already been backpacking and hiking with me a lot at that point. And she carried a backpack. Uh, I've got a photograph here. And here I am with my backpack. This is not on my Appalachian Trail hike. Uh, this is actually one time when I was in Flagstaff, Arizona. We were going up and doing some um, winter backpacking. And here's Kane carrying her backpack. And so she was my first dog, and I primarily got her as a hiking dog. And so Kane was perfect. She carried a pack back really well. Uh, she hiked the first 500 miles of the Appalachian Trail with me. So she hiked from Mount Katahdin to the Massachusetts line. Um, at that point, she went home um, because you're not allowed to bring dogs in Shenandoah National Park or Rocky Mountain National Park. So Kane went back home when we reached Massachusetts. Um, but she was a great, great hiking dog. And so she did that. She did the Appalachian Trail with me. She hiked many, uh, the entire Mid-State Trail in Massachusetts with me. She hiked the whole Long Trail through Vermont with me. And then when I went to school in Arizona and was out west for a while, she did sections of the Pacific Crest and the Continental Divide and the Arizona Trail. 
Uh, she was a great, great um, hiking and camping dog. And um, anyway, she was uh, very healthy for a long time. She lived until we finally had to put her down at 15 years of age. And um, it was devastating when we put her down. So after a year about any dog, we decided that we were ready to bring another dog into our life. And our original plan was we basically wanted to have a dog exactly like Kane. So we wanted to have a dog that could carry a backpack and go hiking and camping with us. And so uh, we made the decision because my original dream was always to have a husky. And so we ended up buying, um, we ended up looking into different breeds and we decided that because we liked winter so much that we wanted to get an Alaskan Malamute. So we drove to Maine, we found a breeder and we bought little Sika. And so Sika was eight weeks old, um, an Alaskan Malamute, a uh, purebred Alaskan Malamute pup. Um, she was a Kotzebue uh, Alaskan Malamute. So there are a couple of different strains, if you will, of, um, of Alaskan Malamutes. There's the Kotzebue and there's the Takara. Uh, the Kotzebue is the smaller uh, dog. So even though she was a smaller Malamute, she was still a bigger dog than Kane ever was. Here is that same pup, Sika, when she was probably about four months old. And um, Sika, when she was fully grown, weighed about 75 pounds, which was larger than Kane. Kane had been 45 pounds. And so our intention with her was to teach her to carry a backpack and to go camping with us. Um, but we quickly learned that she liked to pull. And I will, I'll tell you the whole story about how the dogs taught me to become a musher. Um, it was never my original intention. Um, but we quickly learned that this was not the kind of dog that you go hiking and backpacking with. These really are dogs to go dog sledding with. And so when Kane was, uh, when Sika was about a year old, we decided to get her a friend. And so we purchased another another Alaskan Malamute purebred. Uh, this time he was of the Tagara side, so he was larger. He was a year old, just like she was, and we got Kodiak. And so once we had Sika and Kodiak, we started sledding with them. We were given the sled, and we started going dog sledding with just two dogs. We didn't know anything, but basically everything you've seen me do in Massachusetts where I'm sledding with two dogs, I basically learned with Sika and Kodiak. But then we got addicted. And so we bred Sika and Kodiak twice. We had two litters. We kept both litters their entire lives. And in short order, we had a team. Uh, we had 12 Malamutes. And so here is a picture of myself and my first wife. And we are out sledding with most of the team. Sika is back here. There's Kodiak. Her, her her husband, her mate, and these are all their pups out in front. I've got another picture, it's a little bit bigger. Um, we rarely took all ten out at the same time because we would kind of cycle them. So we would run six or eight dogs, give two or four a rest, and then run the other ones and kind of cycle them out. So here we are, um, Sika and Kodiak um, in the back. And then out front here is Susquatch, who was, um, again, these are all their pups, Sika and Kodiak's pups. And we trained all of them. And here is Susquatch, who was our lead dog. He was phenomenal. He was very strong, very happy. He listened really well to our commands, but he really had a good trail sense, made really good decisions. As good of a lead dog as he was, he never liked running alone. So he had to run his sister next to him. So this is his sister, Manitou, running next to him. There's his brother Banshee, another sister, um, that's Yeti, and then there is, oh, in the back here there's Wendigo, and then Sika and Kodiak, and at home, Sherlock and Zorro were at home, and um, here we are running our dogs. And so this is something that we really enjoyed doing for years, taking our dogs out. And to help support the cost of maintaining a large team like this, we also started doing commercial dog sled tours. So at the time, uh, we had an outdoor adventure company where we taught canoeing and rock climbing and mountaineering and backpacking and um, skiing. We also did dog sledding and ice climbing. And so uh, by taking people on commercial tours, we would take them out on day-long tours. And um, the, this helped to pay. Basically, the, the dogs paid for their keep. And so their veterinarian bills, the traveling bills, the housing, 
uh, the food. Um, that was all basically a wash because basically we were collecting uh, fees is by running it as part of our company. It really, and also in addition to just the money we made from running the dogs, it was a great attraction to our company. It really made us kind of full service. Um, but it was a blast, you know, and so we have so many trails around here. And um, actually here I am, um, a friend of mine is learning to drive. This is a guy from Texas who really didn't have a whole lot of snow experience. And here he is driving a dog, a team of Alaskan Malamutes. I'm in the basket in this picture. And Anyway, that was our team of dogs, and so uh, we had the dogs right up until they all uh, expired, and then for many years we were without dogs again until I decided I was ready, and I got Bandit. So when I got Bandit, when Bandit came into my life, he was a year old. Um, he had been raised in a as a traditional pet. He had been raised as a puppy in a home setting uh, with little boys. And had grown up very loved and very pampered and very playful. Um, I don't think Bandit ever had any idea that he would become um, a real sled dog. Uh, but with me, he did. And so, um, so here, here's my beautiful boy Bandit. And then a few months after I got him, then Shiva came into my life. And so if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you're very familiar with Bandit and Shiva. And so these are my two dogs. And so what these huskies have taught me is uh, I cannot believe they're about half the size of my Malamutes. And so when I first got them, I was kind of surprised to have such small dogs. And when I decided that I wanted to try to train them to pull a sled, I was really wondering what they'd be able to do. And what I've learned is that the Huskies, um, pound for pound, are just um, have way more drive than the Malamutes do. The Malamutes are big and they're strong. I would take uh, groups of clients out. Sometimes there'd be myself and a family of three on the sled. And so they were really good um, working dogs uh, like Clydesdales. But when it comes to speed and running and enthusiasm, the Huskies have really, really impressed me. Uh, I can't believe they're half the size, but um, pound for pound, they're, they're just faster and stronger and more um, have more of a trail drive than, than the Malamutes do. Um, but most surprisingly, is I did not expect to be doing all the wheeled mushing that I do with um, Bandit and Shiva. Um, the Malamutes, when the weather was warm, it was just too hot for them. So usually, pretty much between mid-April to uh, late September, my Malamutes basically spent a lot of time lounging. Um, the weather, they would go on hikes, they'd go on walks. Um, they did not like to swim. They didn't trust water. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, bike showing was out of the question. Um, the running in that warm weather for the Malamutes was just not possible. But with these guys, I'm able to go mushing 12 months a year, as you've seen. And so what I've really enjoyed with this, with Massachusetts in my video series, is showing you that you can really enjoy mushing even having just two dogs, two like normal sized dogs, you don't have to maintain a full kennel of large sled dogs in order to go mushing. You don't need a trailer, you don't need to have a giant kennel, you don't need to have ten dogs. Um, really with like two pet sized dogs that I put in the back of my Subaru, I'm able to, well, we've run a thousand miles now. So basically I've done the equivalent of the, of the Iditarod with these two dogs. So. Um, anyway, that's a little bit of history of my dogs. Um, am I going to get any more? I don't know. Famous last words. Um, I'm really having fun with two. I kind of wonder how much fun I'd have with three or four. We'll see. Um, but anyway, there's a little bit of history of, um, of my dogs, the dogs that have been in my life. And now uh, the snow is still out there. I definitely want to take the dogs for one last snow hike. If it's if it is the last snow um, before the winter before the next winter season, you can see that even though it's a late spring snow, the dogs still get very excited about the snow. Um, here they are inside. This is their their kennel. Um, they stay inside with me at night, but I put them out here every morning, um, and this is kind of their playpen. And you'll see that when the snow is up and around, they are full of energy. So. If I were to take the sled out, they would be more than happy, but um, I don't think it would be good for the sled. This really is pretty wet, sloppy snow, and you see it really isn't covering the ground very well. 
Well, I've got the dogs and we're walking and I'm really glad I didn't bring the sled. Um, even though we had plenty of snow at home at about three inches, I'm down here on one of our snowmobile trails, just about four miles from the house. And you see, there's just nothing. So taking the dogs just for a walk and uh, this particular snowmobile trail is frequented <laughs> by a lot of dog walkers and there's a lot of scent here right now you see the dogs are very excited to just go around and sniff and see who else has been here uh, like I said if I had brought my sled here it would just be getting scratched up Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Massachusetts. Uh, I thought it was really fun sharing pictures of Kane and Sitka and Kodiak and all my old past dogs and uh, talking about them a little bit. So we kind of had a sloppy walk in the woods, but to the dogs, it's fun. And uh, anyway, I had a good time. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, be well, and keep an eye out for our next episode of Massachusetts.